You're listening to Big World Network. Average, Season 1, Episode 7. Written by Jonathan Thompson. Read by Heather Thompson. What is wrong with you? I yelled as soon as I saw Dad waiting for me in the dirt lot. This was the designated place for students to park, so it was barely maintained. But then again, the same could be said of the cars. Dad was leaning up against a flat, gray, late 90s Ford Taurus with the word Taurus spelled out in electrical tape on the windshield. Ha! Absolutely nothing, he responded, grinning. Doctors have called me a perfect spe- Nothing? I came at him raving. You sent a villain to my school. To- to- Why would you do that? I think at this point the anger in my voice finally receded just enough to let him know that I was terrified. He had bristled a little when I first started screaming at him, but now he softened. I mean, don't get me wrong, he didn't turn into a puddle of emotional mush or anything. Altrarian didn't emote. He didn't mush. Villain? Dad said with a slight laugh. What villain? That's just Bart. I love that guy. I took a deep breath and rubbed my hands along the edges of my nose the way I've always done when I'm frustrated. So what was he supposed to do? Inspire me to discover my power? I asked weakly. What do you mean supposed to? Suppose nothing. He did. I didn't do anything, though. Didn't do anything. Dad parroted back, shaking his head. He must have heard something with his super ears that my lame ears missed because he turned to face the empty gravel trail that linked the lot in the school buildings. Hey, Bart, come here. My foe foe peeked his head out from behind a tree and after checking to make sure no one else was around, meekly made his way toward us. Look, I want to show you something. Just listen, okay? Dad asked me quietly. Yeah, I said. Okay. George! Bart started in a hoarse whisper. At least let me change first. We shouldn't all be seen like... Right. Secrecy. Good thinking, Dad said. I wondered for a second if my own personal deus ex machina would suddenly have a way to make us all invisible. Maybe he would be able to construct some sort of cloak bubble or shift us out of a perceptible wavelength of both light and sound. Every solution I came up with would be really, really cool. But Dad had another approach in mind, and he was done by the time I realized what was happening. I came out of my thought stupor to see that we were surrounded by a triangle of three tall, deteriorating cars. Grooves scarred the dirt where the tires had unwillingly been dragged into place. That'll work, Dad said proudly. I huffed and shook my head. What? he said defensively. He used to love car fords. George, Bart said, mustering up what I imagined was the closest thing to anger he was capable of. You aren't supposed to tell him about my machine. Well, that's what's so awesome. I didn't. Dad turned to me. How did you know about Bart's power control thing? It's called a manual... Bart, no, that's not important. Dad cut him off. How'd you do it, Quinn? Some kind of mind reading? Oh, no. X-ray vision? What? Bart gasped. No, I said. I just figured it out. Really? Just figured it out? Dad asked. Yeah. Bart, you probably have too much iron in your blood, right? Um, yeah. How'd you know that? Bart answered suspiciously. There's no other explanation for magnokinesis that makes any sense. That's why you need your machine, right? Ha! Dad interjected. Power found! Wait, said Bart, panicking. He doesn't have any powers? You said this was supposed to help him impress his friends. I could have killed him, George! Really, Dad? Thanks. Nah, watching the way things went down, I was more worried about you, Dad told Bart. Sorry, I didn't want you to hold back so that we could flush out his power, and it worked. No, it didn't, I said annoyed. I just read some stuff on the internet. That's a power, right? Isn't it? Like, a mental one? No, I answered. No, George, I don't think so, Bart agreed. Oh... All right. Thanks anyway, Bart, Dad said as he opened up the barricade of cars. 
No problem, George, Bart sighed. But you owe me. He leaned in close and dropped his voice to a whisper. I can still hear him, though. This guy was a mess. That kid is terrifying. Dad's face lit up more than it probably should have at this. I don't think that's the kind of statement that should inspire parental pride, but parents also shouldn't be sicking superheroes on their children, so whatever. Bart started to walk away, but I stopped him. Hey, Bart, you know you can get a pretty simple treatment for that, right? But when I lose my power? Well, yeah, probably, but you also won't die of liver failure. How'd you know that? Dad asked. You sure there's not some kind of brain power at work here? Yeah, Dad, I'm sure. I said, exhausted. We watched Bart leave in silence. After he was gone, still looking into the distance, Dad finally spoke up. So I guess this one was pretty bad? Yeah, this was pretty bad. Worse than the time I dropped you? You mean last night? I turned to face him. You could have at least waited a few days before trying to kill me in front of the entire school. And then I saw something in my father's face that I seldom saw. Enlightenment. Wait a minute. You think that was embarrassing, don't you? Well, yeah. Quinn! You tackled a masked superpower attacker. You were a madman! Yeah, but... There's no but! That was crazy awesome! People are gonna be freaking out over you! I won't be surprised if they make a statue in your honor. I laughed uncomfortably at the flattery, starting to feel a little proud of myself. I doubt that, Dad. Why? I had my first statue when I was about your age. And with that, the smallest world of pride was gone. I gotta get back to class, Dad. Boo! Dad said to my back. Hey, Quinn. I turned around in response. I'm proud of you. Even though we haven't found your powers yet, you handled that like a champ. He laughed, but I think you may have broken poor Bart. I remembered something that had been bothering me and stopped again. Oh, Dad? Yeah. How'd you do that? With the sky riding? Dad took a deep, thoughtful breath. Let's just call it moisture control. Ah, why are all your powers so gross? <laughs> Music by Kevin McLeod. You're listening to Big World Network.